So welcome to the NT Product Showcase. This is our final webinar in our series um, and we're helping our tourism operators connect with the travel industry. My name is Karen Smith and I'm the Domestic Distribution Coordinator for Tourism NT. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so today, um, well, thanks for tuning in today. We're going to be joined by five of our operators and uh, they're from the Uluru, Alice Springs and surrounding areas. So we have Eleanor Grasso from Voyages Indigenous Tourism Australia, who you might also know as Ears Rock Resort. We have Monica Foster from Seat Outback Australia, Sophie Natera from Kings Canyon Resort, Patrick Bedford from Emu Run Experience, and Jess Lillis from AAT Kings Inspiring Journeys. So thanks for being here today, everybody. Uh, we've got quite a bit to cover, but I'll give you a quick overview of the area we're talking about for those who haven't been on one of our previous webinars. So um, Uluru, Alice Springs, Kings Canyon, and Tennant Creek are what we refer to as the Red Centre in the NT, as you can see here on the map. Uluru is um, probably Australia's most recognised icon. It's one of the greatest natural wonders of the world and definitely a must-see destination. And it's a place that you need to visit to really understand the deep spiritualness of it. Uh, flights into Uluru um, are frequent it, it, outside of COVID times. They're a bit reduced at the moment, but you do get direct flights in from Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, and they take about three to three and a half hours. And you can fl uh, you can drive from uh, to Uluru from Alice Springs. It takes about five hours and from Kings Canyon about three and a half hours. The main, um, there's rental cars available at Ease Rock Resort as well as in Alice Springs. The main township in this area is called Ulara, and that's where Ayers Rock Resort is based, and they offer transfers to and from the airport for their guests. Most of the tours in this area will also offer a transport, a, a, a pickup, a transfer, sorry, um, but it's also handy to get a rental car to get out and explore the area, and you can visit places like uh, Katajuta, which is about a 40-minute drive from Ulara. Alice Springs is known as the capital of the outback and it's well known for its beautiful desert landscapes, including the McDonnell Ranges. And there's a really great range of activities on offer in and around Alice Springs. And it's really well known for its Aboriginal culture. So Alice Springs is quite well connected um, by air. So you can fly in from the main eastern uh, cities. They all take between two and uh, three and a half hours. So the drive into Alice Springs from Uluru is about a five hour drive and from Kings Cannon is about a four to four and a half drive, but that depends on which route you take. Um, you can take a slightly shorter route if you've got a four drive. And you can get to Alice Springs through uh, by rail and that's on the GAN, which um, travels between Darwin and Alice Springs. So now I want to hand you over to our operators. We're going to start with Eleanor Grasso from Voyages. So Eleanor, I will get you to now share your screen and I will stop sharing. Hi everyone, can you hear me? We can. Great, okay. Let me get this started. Great. And everyone can see the screen? We can. Yep. Perfect. Okay, great. Let me get going. So hello, everyone. My name is Elena and I am the Sales and Marketing Coordinator for Voyages into um, Indigenous Tourism Australia. Part of our portfolio, we have Airs Rock Resort and it is located in the heart of Australia. So just to give you some information, um, as Karen already touched on, so currently with COVID, we have three direct flights into Uluru. Um, right now, we have two flights operating Monday and Friday for, from Brisbane. For Sydney, we have three flights operating Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. And from Melbourne, we have two flights operating, which is Tuesday and Saturday. We will be increasing our flights for Brisbane and Sydney, and that will be starting from the 1st of March. 
as also mentioned, you can, um, we do have flight options from Alice Springs, but you can also drive from Alice Springs to Yulara. So with COVID, um, we have a few arrival requirements and procedures that um, I'm just going to touch on today. So basically, um, we when we have when we make reservations, we do require passengers' emails, mobile numbers, and arrival and departure details. We will be sending multiple emails starting 21 days prior to departure, and this will be sent from voyages to the guests or also through their trade partners. Um, this information is really, really important because it will include the link to the NT government website for guests to complete the border entry permit, which is actually required. Um, the border permit must be filled out and it needs to be accessible via the phone or the guests can also have them printed out as we do have the NT police and health departments which will be checking. Um, also we have included um, having temperature screenings for all guests. Okay so this is just a little bit of a map of um, the township in Yulara. So Ayers Rock Resort is actually located on a ring circuit with our hotels wrapped around it. Um, we do have a town centre, we also have a campground um, and we have our properties all towards your majority of them are towards the left hand side. So with um, Ayers Rock Resort we have implemented, um, oh, hold on, I think I, sorry, one moment. There we go, sorry, I missed the slide. <laughs> so, um, Ayers Rock Resort, we do have um, five hotel options plus a campground. Currently with COVID, we only have the three hotels and the campground open. So that consists of sales in the desert, Amy Walk Apartments and the Lost Camel. Desert Gardens will be, um, we're anticipating it to reopen on the 1st of July 21, um, but in regards to the Outback Piney, um, this will remain closed until further notice. Um, within the resort, as mentioned, we do have our shopping centre, which is the Yalara Town Centre, which include um, cafes, it has an IGA, bank, post office, beauty salon, pretty much everything what anyone needs. Um, we also have a cafe and a few restaurant open, um, options as well. And there is also a courtesy shuttle that operates every 15 to 20 minutes that takes you around the resort. Again, there's the map. <laughs> so um, we have implemented um, higher um, consideration for the health and well-being of our employees so um, guest business guests and business partners by taking on measures aligned with Australia and the global practice of COVID protocols so just to, um, to touch on a few of these so with training um, all staff undertook federal government COVID-19 management and infection control diversity chemical training, infection control in Indigenous areas, and we supply PPE gear, which is available for all the staff. Um, regarding the rooms, um, we have enhanced chemical cleaning, removal of the mini bar, removal of papers and brushes. Um, with the public areas, we have enhanced chemical cleaning and increased frequency of cleaning of the high traffic public areas, including bathrooms, handrails um, and door handles. And for our touring Sounds of Silence and the Field of Light Star Pass, um, we've, for the June top canapes, each guest is served with an indi individual box instead of having the canapes handed to them. Um, seating is reduced from tables of eight and 10 to six, unless if there is a family group, then we will have them all together. And then um, also for the front of the buffet, we have fitted a perspect with team members serving each guest their main course and desserts. 
Um, also with the airport transfers, we have partnered with AAT Kings, um, mutually agreed to airport transfers operating 50% of seating capacity. So, sales in the desert, um, which is our five-star property, we have undergone a refurbishment and this is our lobby area. The refurbishment is going to, um, has been taken place in all rooms, bathrooms and our air conditioning system. So, with, um, I don't have any pictures of the superior room upgrade, but we have our pictures for the bathrooms. So, for the terrace and the superior room, the superior will have one vanity, while the um, terrace bathroom will have two vanities, and we won't, um, we don't have any shower over bath anymore. So with the, this is a terrace room picture, um, we have new light fittings and upgraded our um, artworks. And our terrace balcony has changed a bit as well. So we've introduced some lounge chairs and we have new privacy <laughs> So with our hotels, um, the restaurants, we have a few restaurants within our hotels. Um, at this stage with COVID, we only have the Sales in the Desert restaurant open um, for the hotel restaurants. So Ilkari, which is um, where we have our breakfast buffets for lunch and dinner, we still have that operating. We also have Whopper Bar, which is um, open for lunch and dinner and the Pira pool bar which is open for lunch and drinks however in the town center we still have the food outlets open so we have our geckos cafe which is open for lunch and dinner and our colada cafe where our indigenous trainees learn food and beverage as part of their indigenous training program so that's where you can grab a coffee um, something like for breakfast or even for lunch you can grab a sandwich so our field of light um, we have operating however at this stage and not at field of light which is the dinner under the stars including the um, the field of lights we have not um, commence that so that will be um, open hopefully around the 1st of April 2022 with the field of light star pass we do have um, limited days that it's operating so at this stage it's Monday Wednesday Friday and Sunday however we should um, have it commencing back to every day on the 1st of May 2021 um, for the Field of Light Star Pass, which is just a walk through the Field of Light, um, we do have this operating every day. However, we only have the one departure, which is 30 minutes after sunset. With the Sounds of Silence dinner, um, the dinner under the stars, without the lights, we do have this operating. Um, again, at this stage, we only have it operating from Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. But again, from the 1st of May 2021, it will be operating every day. So if you guys want, you can take a, um, a photo of this schedule. So this is pretty much giving you an update on the days and the touring that we have operating right now. Okay, so um, something very exciting that we have now is our Airs Rock Resort guest app. So um, you guys can download it or tell your guests to download it prior to their arrival. So with this app, it just makes it a lot easier for guests um, for checking in and out of hotel rooms remotely. So they don't need to, you know, scan the little barcode when you go to a restaurant. You can do this prior. 
Um, it also allows guests to um, create activity itineraries. So if they want to do some of our free guest activities and they have tours booked, they can actually manage their own itinerary. So they'll get notifications of when um, specific tours are coming up. Um, it also features an interactive map of the surrounding area, including directions to key points of interest listings and description of places to go, services offered and retail options where they can create wish lists if they want to purchase a particular item, painting, anything like that. Just makes guess, life a lot easier. <laughs> and yeah, that's my presentation. So they're my details. Um, if anyone needs to contact me, feel free to. I'm happy to help out with anything. Thank you. Great, thank you for that, Eleanor. I don't think we've had any questions come through, so um, everybody has your details there if they want to get in touch with you. So thanks was, very much. Oh, was you one, one, sorry. Yes, just one question, Karen. Um, uh, just about Longitude 131. Oh, I have you. Oh, wow. When did you um stay there? Uh, is it open yet, please? Oh, is it right. open? Oh, yes, it is open. Sorry. I thought right. you said you stayed there. Yeah, no, it is open. Terrific. Thank you. Great. Great. Thanks so much for that. Next up, we have Monica Foster from Seat Outback Australia. So, Monica, if you would like to share your screen. Hey, thank you. There we go. All right, you guys can all see that? We can. Excellent. Just one second. All right. Uh, so, hi guys, my name's Monica. I'm from Seed Outback Australia. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just here today to give you a quick update on everything that uh, is happening at Seed Outback Australia and what we do. Um, so, as most of you guys probably know, um, Seed is a small group to an operating company based in the Red Centre, um, specifically operating out of Ayers Rock Resort, um, travelling out to Kings Canyon, um, and exploring basically the Red Centre um, in small groups uh, or on private bases as well. Uh, as I said, we're all small groups, so a minimum of two and a maximum of 11 per tour. Um, at the moment, until about the 31st of March, our minimum numbers have risen to a minimum of six to depart uh, because our operation is way smaller than what it was. However, from the 1st of April, uh, we're looking at continuing with our minimum of two with a maximum of 11 to depart. Um, we're really lucky to work in the area that we do um, where we're able to connect with the local Aboriginal communities as well. Um, so some of our touring offers uh, trips out to the APY lands, um, connecting with Sammy Wilson um, or Sammy Uluru as some of you guys will know him as, uh, and joining him on homeland tours too. Um, so, as I said, we are based in the Red Centre, so our company is actually based at Ayers Rock Resort. All of our buses, all of our tour guides, all of our vehicles uh, start from there. Uh, we can do touring up in Alice Springs and Kings Canyon, um, and we'll drive up to pick your clients up and take them to wherever they need to go. Um, but Uluru, Karajuta, Pachi, Mount Connor, and um, anything around Ayers Rock Resort are our main uh, operation bases from the Red Centre. Um, just a few of our tours that we have as well. Um, depending on your clients and what they want to do and what they want to see depends on what sort of touring that you're going to choose for them. Um, so if they're not really a fan of walking, our Sea at Uluru Highlights tour is fantastic. It's a nice short walk. You get to experience that sunrise, uh, but you don't have to walk the full 12 kilometres like you would on our Sea at Uluru Trek. So the Sea at Uluru Trek is that little bit longer. Um, 12 kilometres all around the base, sunrise as you're walking along. So we don't go to a viewing area first and then start the walk. We're actually on the base walk as the sun's rising. Um, so that first section of the walk is a little bit faster than what most people would dawdle at just to get to a good sunrise viewing spot. Um, and then after that, it commences at a evenly paced walk, learning about everything as you go along. Um, the five-hour Uluru Sunset Tour is uh, almost a combination of the highlights and the trek, just in the afternoon. 
Um, so two short walks between two and a half to three kilometers in total um, and driving around the base. So you're not doing that 12 kilometer walk. Um, and then if you are doing a sunrise, but your clients want to see a sunset as well, our see at Uluru sunset two hours is literally just a viewing of sunset. You don't get up close to Uluru. You don't experience any of the stories or hear or see any of the rock art, uh, learn about the waterholes. None of that happens on that two hour tour. You are simply just watching the sunset. Um, Katajuta is, of course, the other rock formation that's out there. Um, and we offer three different tours to Katajuta. Um, our Sea at Katajuta Sunrise Tour operates all year round, um, picking up at sunrise and uh, heading out to Katajuta, watching the sunrise, enjoying breakfast and doing the 2.6 kilometre Walpa Gorge walk. This walk is uh, graded as a moderate walk, um, so it is rocky and uneven underfoot. Um, but being small groups means that we can sort of cater to those that need to walk a little bit slower along the walk. Uh, we're not in a rush to get through it. We can still talk and uh, walk at the same time. Uh, and we can also say, here's a really nice chair if you don't want to continue. We're just going to head straight up the path and come back and get you uh, and we'll continue our journey along. The other two tours that we operate to Cutter is the Sea at Cutter Judah Domes uh, and the Sea at Valley of the Winds. Sea at Cutter Judah Domes uh, is fantastic as a short afternoon tour. Um, especially if you want to join the Sounds of Silence that evening or the Field of Lights that evening because it's not a sunset tour. So we go out there in the afternoon, we're back before sunset so that you can jump on those buses uh, and enjoy the tour. This tour uh, does not generally operate in December and January as the temperatures are just way too hot in the gorge at that time. Uh, Valley of the Winds is the other tour. Um, we complete the full 7.4 kilometre circuit out on the Valley of the Winds. Um, it only operates April through till October at 7.30 in the morning. Um, and that is those. Uh, and now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our uh, exclusive locations that we tour to. So we've got Mount Connor. Um, everyone knows Mount Connor as the other mountain that's out in the Red Centre. Uh, this tour is on a privately owned cattle station of Curtin Springs. Uh, and we drive around checking out the salt lakes, learning about the flora and fauna that's out there, um, and just basically learning about your history of the pioneers because everybody everybody knows how hard it is to run cattle or feed or anything anywhere when there's a drought. Imagine having a drought for like nine years and trying to run cattle with absolutely no rain for nine years. It's almost impossible. Um, so that's all part of the history out at Curtin Springs and that's what we get to learn about or we get to teach your clients while we're out there. And the views are absolutely amazing. You're, one, uh, you're, you're on a property that's 1,028,960 acres and you are a group of at the most 11 on that entire space by yourself. So it's pretty incredible to go out to Mount Connor. Um, and then we have Pachi. Pachi is our other Aboriginal experience that we have. Um, Pachi, you go out with Sammy Wilson um, or one of his family members um, and they take you out onto his homeland. Now, what you do while you're out there, uh, you're sort of in Ananu hands. We drive the bus, we stick to the track that we're allowed to drive on, but what happens between pick up and drop off is up to Sammy. Um, so with COVID, Sammy does travel in his own separate vehicle. Um, but he still stops and starts and points out all the locations and tells all the stories um, and really teaches you about his personal family history, what it was like growing up on the lands, um, the significant locations in the area, where you got that water, where you got that food, teaching you all about that information as well as introducing you to the changes that happened when tourism started in Central Australia and how they were able to cope with that. Um, the other, just before I get onto our Sea at COVID procedures, the other tour that you may know about that we operate or we used to operate was the Sea at Cave Hill tour. Um, at the moment, due to COVID-19, we are not allowed down into the APY lands, so we are unable to run the tour at the moment until 2022, um, just for the safety of the local Indigenous people down there. They do not want to even risk um, COVID-19 getting into the community down there. So we are not running that tour at all. Um, you'll notice if you do go on our website, uh, the tour does not show up on our website anymore either. 
um, and that's we'll find out when that comes back and uh, keep you posted. Um, but as I was saying, see it uh, not COVID-19 procedures. Um, of course, we have basically done everything that we can to make sure we can safely operate with COVID-19. Um, all our guides have done the uh, Department of Health COVID-19 training before they were able to restart guiding after the closures. Um, and they've all of the guides have also been taught what symptoms to look out for um, as passengers are getting on the vehicles, able to test um, temperatures and everything like that as well. Our vehicles are another big thing that we've had to upgrade all of our cleaning on. Of course, our vehicles are the main way that we can get around and travel around. So everything is completely sanitised before, during and after each tour. Um, our guides carry all the cleaning um, equipment so that during the tour, everything that's touched regularly can be wiped down. The guide tries to touch as much stuff as he can so that the other people don't need to and clean and keep everything under control that way. Um, and of course, all of our travel uh, all of our travelling and our tours happen in travel bubbles. So basically all of our passengers are, are on our bus um, and we try and stick to our travel group the entire way around. We self distance from everybody uh, else in the area um, and make sure that we sort of stay away from as many people as we can. In the desert, there's really not that many people out there, so it makes it very easy to social distance. Um, thank you very much for listening. If you do have any questions, let me know. Great, thanks Monica, that was really interesting. I don't think we've had any questions come through, have we Meg? Uh, just one question, Karen. Oh. Um, uh, just a question on what is included in the breakfast on the sea at Uluru sunrise trek, please. Excellent. So um, the trek, the Karajuda and the highlights all have different breakfasts. The trek includes um, a choice of muesli. Uh, there's tea, coffee, hot chocolate um, and a thermos with hot water provided to all of our clients. Um, we also have uh, muesli bars, biscuits, fruit, juice, a bottle of water, um, a spoon so you can eat your cereal in the trek bag. Um, and that's all carried on their trek bag. So each individual passenger carries that bag. Um, when we get back to our operations base with COVID, those bags get washed and everything gets cleaned and removed for every single tour. Um, the Cutter Due to Sunrise breakfast includes raisin toast, uh, a range of mueslis, uh, tea, coffee, hot chocolate. And that coffee is not just instant coffee. It's proper plunged coffee that we uh, plunge on tour every morning. Um, and the beans are specifically collected from an area in Adelaide and we drive them up to Ayers Rock to be able to have uh, really good coffee up there as well. And tea, coffee, hot chocolate, uh, raisin toast, fruit, cereal. That's all of Katajuda. And then uh, the Sea at Uluru highlights is same as Katajuda, but instead of that raisin toast, it's banana bread instead. Great. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. No uh, sorry, there was also, sorry, Karen. There was also a question from Suzanne on the favourite tour, please. Oh, no, my favourite tour. I can never answer this because I love all of them so much. But if I had to pick just one, it would be the, um, oh, probably. <laughs> oh, no, this is really hard because I love the question. Honor. I'm going to say Mount Connor because it's the most out there sort of tour. It's a different experience. You go to Uluru to learn all about the culture and the Aboriginalness that's out there, but you don't realise that the Northern Territory is made up of so much cattle and that the cattle play is a really big part in Central Australia. Um, so I think Mount Connor because the views, the isolation that's out there, I mean, Ayers Rock is isolated enough as it is, but Mount Connor is even more so. And... Yeah, yeah, Mount Connor. We'll pick Mount Connor, but that'll change in about five minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Monica. There's a couple of other questions uh, oh, yeah. in there as well, if you don't mind just popping yeah, yeah. to the conversation tab oh. and answering them. Um, Thank you. Great. Thanks so much for that, Monica. Next time, no we've got, Thank you. We've got Sophie Natera from Kings Canyon Resort. Sophie, if you can share your screen. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Actually, that's a PDF version. There we are. Uh, where am I? 
God. Yeah, can you see? Can you all see that? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sophie, and I'm the National Sales Coordinator um, for Kings Canyon Resort. So thank you for taking out the time to um, hear about this uh, wonderful product. So um, Kings Canyon Resort uh, is located a short driving distance. Um, and when I say short, I mean like a couple of hours, three hours from Uluru um, or a four-hour drive from Ali Springs. Um, we also do coach uh, tours as well, which are done by AAT Kins. We, in the past, did a scenic air transfer from Uluru. Um, at the moment, obviously, due to COVID, that is on um, pending while we confirm with our external stakeholders. So we are hoping to bring that back um, for the new season, but um, we'll definitely advise that um, in the coming in the coming months. So, so yeah, we call ourselves the uh, middle triangle of the uh, the Red Center. So, Kings Canyon is uh, an accommodation product, obviously. So, as you can see, uh, it is quite a massive property. Um, so it. We have a range of accommodation from campgrounds to uh, school co coach group uh, accommodation, lodge rooms, uh, resort accommodations to our premium uh, glamping tents. Um, so this is our first range of accommodation um, at Kings Canyon. So our comfortable standard room, so they're quite spacious and they contain separate ensuite with uh, shower or bath. We do have a few special access rooms um, which are, which need to be booked um, or get a request. Uh, so that is just a, an overview of the interiors of the standard rooms. So each of them have a little balcony where you can actually sit down there and enjoy a glass of wine and hopefully see a dingo go past. Um, and then our second tier of accommodation are our deluxe spa rooms. So these offer spacious spa baths and they feature a window uh, which provides scenic views, obviously to the rock escarpments, uh, each suite offering private balconies. So I'll just take you in here a bit more closer so you can have a look at the, uh, the spa. Um, and here we have our recently uh, added premium rooms, which is our glamping tents. So we've got six glamping tents, three of which are accommodating for couples only, and then the other three can uh, fit up to a family of four. So we've got uh, six in total. Each of them have their own private ensuite, so it's just walk-in shower, no bath. Uh, the family suites have a separate annex um, and that houses two single beds for um, for the children or if you're traveling with friends, that's a great uh, selection. Um, so I'll just go through. So that's a little living area in one of our glamping tents. Um, and that's obviously the uh, sleeping area or the one of the bedrooms. And uh, it's obviously with the glamping tents, uh, they all have like a little swinging armchair on the balcony. And we've been we've been trying to provide like a um, what do you call it? The tea, like afternoon tea. So we boil a tea over the fire for you and provide you with a bit of nibbles to enjoy the uh, sunset. Um, and with our dining options at Kings Canyon, we have a few range of dining options. The Oaks Bistro and Thirsty Dingo Bar. Uh, this is more a casual made to order breakfast and lunch menu um, type of scenarios that they offer from salads to snacks to burgers, fish and chips. Um, this is quite popular with our day trackers who drive in. Um, and for the campgrounds as well. Uh, and here we've got our Outback barbecue. So really great for groups 
Um, and this is where we feature a meat and a vegetarian option. So the chef will cook to order um, on the grill and we have a self-serve salad bar. Um, and the Outback Barbecue only operates from April to October, so obviously during the cooler months of the year. Um, and there's also a live music available as well. And this is our Carmichael's restaurant. It has recently undergone a soft refurb, so we've changed um, a lot of the interiors of the restaurant. It opens on the 1st of April. So Carmichael's restaurant is open daily for a modern take on buffet breakfast and offers a a la carte dinner menu as well. Um, and under a desert mall. Um, this is a very fine dining experience, uh, quite popular with anniversaries, honeymooners, or just couples who are looking for something a bit more uh, adventurous and out there. Uh, it is a five course dinner menu that comes with paired wines. So um, at the beginning, we offer you um, canapes and uh, a glass of bubbles while you are shown to your table. It is quite intimate, so it can sit up to up to 12 people at one time um, and operates only from April to October. So during the hotter periods, uh, if you choose to undergo a under a desert moon dining experience, we can um, offer that in the Carmichael's restaurant, but that has to be uh, requested and booked um, in advance. Uh, so in terms of activities at Keynes Canyon Resort, uh, Obviously, everyone travels to Kings Canyon to do the famous rim walk. But apart from the rim walk, we do have um, other options such as um, sipping a cold beer or a wine while watching the sunset at our refurbed sunset viewing platform. Um, we've got our little yellow sunbeam trailer that uh, you can purchase a drink from. Um, and you can see there the pictures I'll just run through. We've got our rim walk as well, which you can do uh, self-guided on your own. You can drive there or we do a guided tour with um, AAT Kings. And that usually starts um, from six in the morning. Uh, the aim is to get yourself on the top before the sun hits. Um, apparently the first 20 minutes of the walk is uh, quite strenuous. So we've gave it a nickname of the um, heart attack hill. So not for the faint-hearted. Um, so there you go, that gives you a aerial view of the uh, famous Kings Canyon Rim Walk. And also we do provide a um, local cultural tour which is with the Aboriginal um, family uh, which is an hour away from Kings Canyon, so it's called the Kark Tour. Uh, pretty engaging one hour tour where the locals tell you about their history and um, how tourism has impacted um, their culture and their families. Um, and at the end of the tour, you get to um, try uh, the widgety grub. So I personally have a couple of times and um, I'll tell you, it does has a mixture of a KFC popcorn chicken and um, peanut butter all mushed together. So not quite fun, but very interesting and delicious. And uh, this here is one of our breathtaking tours that I try and push with our guests is the Heli Dash tour, which takes eight minutes. So um, you can book this before you get to the resort or when you're um, at the property, one of our lovely receptionists can um, book that in for you. And um, and that is the end of my presentation on Kins. And uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to shoot. Or otherwise, my contact details are shown on the um, on the screen here. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Sophie. That was really interesting. Beautiful photos there. Meg, have we had any questions come through? Yes, there's a couple of questions. Um, uh, do you have interconnecting in family rooms? Please, Sophie. Uh, Yes, we do. So with um, with the standard rooms, we can do a few interconnecting, uh, mainly with our deluxe spa rooms. We can, but that has to be on a on a request basis. Fabulous. 
And um, is the under the desert moon on a particular day or days of the week between April yes, and October? So, yep. So it operates Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays only. Fabulous. Um, there was also a question. Oh, well, there's a couple of other questions. Um, but you've got a good buddy in Jez who's putting some uh, Jess who's putting some answers through. So perhaps you can oh, just yeah, jump onto go. the yeah, conversation thanks, Jess. as I well. Can see that. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks so much for that, Sophie. Next up, we've got Patrick from Emu Run. So Patrick, if you want to um, take it away. No worries. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, um, yeah, I'm so happy to see so many people um, around the country um, on this morning. It's great to see there's actually a demand um, to know what's in Central Australia. Um, I'm Patrick Bedford. I'm the CEO and Managing Director of Immune Experience. My other hat that I also wear is the Chairman of Tourism Central Australia. So on that point, I'll take a quick second just to say uh, there's never been a better time to come to the Red Centre. We've had it pretty quiet out here, as I'm sure you guys are well aware around the country. Uh, there's a lot of products you've just heard there, which are absolutely fabulous products, with, which I take people to on my tour company. But yes, um, my question is to everyone, as Laura Bingle said, where the bloody hell are you? So we want to see as many tourists coming up this season to really kind of show you guys uh, the best of Central Australia. So um, I'll go back to wearing my other hat now, Patrick at Emu Run. All right, so um, yeah, so Emu Run Experience, uh, been around uh, 20 years this year, so we're coming up to our anniversary, which is really exciting. Uh, we're one of the bigger operators in Central Australia, so we operate across Alice Springs and down to Ayers Rock as well, so we cover boat locations as well as Kings Canyon as well. Uh, one of the things we're quite proud of is our TripAdvisor Hall of Fame Awards. Um, we've had them now for I think it's 10 years we're coming up on. Uh, we're one of two, uh, we're one of the only operators that have two of the Hall of Fame awards. So I'm quite proud of that. Um, we're really, um, our focus is on that unforgettable lifetime experience for every customer that comes to Central Australia. Um, I'm a big believer that Kings, uh, Kings Canyon, Ayers Rock, they're the great natural wonders of the world. So we have to deliver a, a touring experience which matches that. So when people leave here, they're amazed and they'll tell all their friends and we get more people coming back. So that's just a little bit about our uh, vision. So as mentioned, Alice Springs, Kings Canyon, and Uluru across that whole range. So this is a variety of product we do. I'll start with the um, Alice Springs. So our three main touring products out of Alice is the one day Uluru tour out Katajuda with Sunset Barbecue. So basically we leave from Alice Springs in the morning and we head down to Ayers Rock, do a full day of touring and then back late at night. It's actually our biggest tour pre-COVID about, uh, I think it's 10,000 plus people a year travel from Alice Springs in that particular tour. We also do coach transfers between Alice Springs and Ayers Rock and vice versa. So we do it both directions. Uh, the West McDonald Range is a very popular tour out of Alice Springs. When you're in Alice, you have to see this is a must do. Uh, it covers a lot of the gorges and chasms, uh, water holes in summer in particular, we do a lot of swimming uh, when it gets a little bit warmer. Also then we have Pam Valley four wheel drive tour. This is one of those Beautiful off the beaten track, kind of hidden gems of Central Australia. Um, we only do it from May to, or sorry, March to October because it gets too hot in the valley in summer. But I'll go through in a bit more detail what uh, we see out there. It's absolutely gorgeous out there. On top of that, we do uh, the airport shuttle services in Alice Springs. So, you know, from their hotel to the um, airport and vice versa, and also to the Alice Springs Desert Park. So we take people uh, from their hotels out, drop them there, their entries included, and then we bring them back afterwards to the um, hotel. So down to the other, uh, down to Ayers Rock. Um, so we got a variety of product down there as well. So we do also the one day Uru tour and Katajuda out of Ayers Rock um, as well. That's seven days a week starting 10 days from now. Uh, we also do an Uluru Sunset Barbecue. So we pick them up from the resort just before sunset, take them out to the barbecue area um, and do a full barbecue and back after sunset. We also have a two day Uluru and Kings Canyon tour as well. Uh, with this particular product, it can start also in Alice Springs, but it has to finish at Ayers Rock, unfortunately. That's just the way it's set up. So day one, we do the day trips, they down from Alice Springs, they'd stay overnight at the resort, and day two, they go to Kings Canyon, um, breakfast included. They'll do uh, the canyon walk or the creek bed, and then they return back to uh, Ayers Rock Resort that evening. As mentioned, we do the coach transfers as well. Some new product, which was supposed to start last year, um, which 
obviously COVID um, didn't uh, allow that to happen. Uh, so we do, um, as of next week, we're doing the Uluru Sunrise Tour. So we'll pick them up for about 45 minutes before sunrise, take them out to the sunrise viewing area. Afterwards, there's a light breakfast, and then we'll drop them back to the resort. There's also the Uluru Sacred Sites. So that's around the base of Uluru. We do some guided walks there. Again, pick them up from the resort into the um, sacred site. So you have the Mala Walk and the Mutajula Waterhole. And then afterwards, we drop them back to the resort again. And the same with the Katajula Tour. So that's an afternoon tour where we pick them up. So I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, as I mentioned, the one-day Uluru and Katajula Tour with Sunset Barbecue. So this one departs from Yulara, which is Ayers Rock Resort. We go in and uh, we do Katajuda first. So we spend a bit of time there at Walpa Gorge. And once we finish the walk there, which takes about 45 minutes, we'll drive back into the cultural center. Again, about 45 minutes at the cultural center. Um, so that they could just go in and buy some souvenirs, understand a little bit about the local culture. Um, and then from there, we head over to the base of Uluru, where we'll do two guided walks there. We'll do the, the Mutajula waterhole, and we'll also do the Mala walk as well. And then to finish off the day in, in real outback style, we sit down and we do a full uh, steak dinner, uh, barbecue, and the viewing area. So while you're sitting back with your champagne, uh, no French people here, hopefully, sparkling wine. Um, and then while you're sitting back, the, the guides are cooking up your dinner, and once the sun is set, we pack up everything and we head back to the resort and drop everybody off. Now, the other tour which is similar is the Alice Springs option. So just to mention with this one, it is seven days a week. Um, once we kick off, I think it's on the 5th of uh, March, seven days a week out of the resort. Uh, the Alice Springs option is only four days a week. So it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. The differences are we still do the same touring itinerary in the park. They are different vehicles. So this is the bigger coach out of Alice. The other tour is a maximum 21 people. Pe people excuse me. So with the Alice Springs option, uh, in the morning we leave around 6 a.m., 6.15 out of Alice Springs. On the way down, we do commentary about the different locations and areas we cross, you know, the semi-arid desert, uh, the Fink, um, etc. Here at El Dunda, we stop for a full buffet breakfast. So El Dunda is the center of the center, uh, we call it, and um, it's also the home of the emu there as well. So we stop there, we do a full buffet breakfast, and then we're on the road by nine o'clock. We'll also stop off at the Mount Connor lookout. Um, so on one side, you have the salt lakes. And on the other side, you'll have the Mount Connor. So it's a beautiful uh, little rest stop there. We do about 10 or 15 minutes stop there. And then we get into Yulara around lunchtime. So once we get in there, we do a packed lunch for everyone on the bus, which we picked up that morning at El Dunda. And so the people coming out of Alice um, are well fed on that trip. As I mentioned in the last uh, tour, we'd cover all the highlights in the park. This tour also includes the Sunset Barbecue. And then once we've uh, finished the Sunset, we basically turn around and head back to Alice Springs. Uh, this is one of our uh, biggest tours, as in it's long, but it's also quite well broken up with the uh, itinerary, as in we stop every two hours, El Dunda, Mount Connor, and on the same in the way home, people can just sit back, watch a movie, and relax on the bus. Uh, the Uluru Sunrise Tour, um, picked them up before, about 45 minutes before sunrise. Uh, we take them out, we do some commentary on the way into the park. Um, once we're in there, again, they go up to the sunset viewing area. The guide prepares a light breakfast, which would be muffins, uh, uh, muffins, tea, coffee, fruit, juices. And then once sunrise uh, is finished, they come back down, spend a bit of time there. We're not in any hurry. And then basically head back over to the resort and drop them off. So the idea would be if you do the one day tour out of the resort or out of Alice, the next morning you can do the sunrise and then you've covered all the highlights and the attractions in the park. The Katajuda Afternoon Wulpa Gorge Tour. So that one picks up at 11.45, uh, pretty sure 11.45 from the resort. Uh, we head in um, straight to Katajuda. Uh, we do a lot of commentary on the way out about the location, geology, a little bit of history and um, cultural uh, stories as well. And then from there, we, we get to the gorge. They spend about 40, 45 minutes walking down to the end of the gorge. Uh, it's quite spectacular uh, scenery on the way out. And then once we've done, they finish the walk and they've all come back, Again, we drop them back to the resort. So the idea with this particular tour is if they want to just, you know, at the resort do something a bit different, they can just go out there and actually see that one uh, location and do a bit of a walk there as well. Um, also, if their flight arrived, for example, at 11 o'clock, we could pick them up at 11.45 because they're not able to check into the resort till 2 p.m. So that gives them something to do straight away rather than just sitting around. Uh, they can maximize the most of their time at the resort. 
the um, Uluru Sacred Sites. So this is basically all around the base of Uluru. So we do guided walks as well as a drive guide. So uh, first we'll head to the, the Mala a walk and uh, we do a lot of uh, culture there, uh, about the dream time stories. Then we'll drive around the rock, continuing on the story. And then once we get to the waterhole, we finish off the story. And then also in reverse, we'll drive back around so the people on the other side of the bus can see the uh, scenery on the opposite side of the bus. So we do all of that. It takes about an hour and a half to do that section. And again, um, it's for people who arrive, say, for example, at one o'clock or 12.30 and want to do something in the afternoon. They can jump on this tour from the resort. Um, then from there, we drop them back to the resort. And then you have the sunset barbecue. So with this one, it's about an hour and a half before sunset, we pick you up. We bring you in, you sit back, relax, uh, a couple of glasses of sparkling wine. Uh, we cook up, cook up a steak barbecue, um, lots of different salads, sausages, you know, a good spread. And um, yeah, just sit back and let the, uh, the masterpiece of Uluru do its thing with the changing colors. And then we drop them back to the resort afterwards. Also, the good thing is, for example, on the day tour, they can also do the field of light in the afternoon and uh, evening. So when we drop them off, there's plenty of time to do the field of light. So then in the morning, you could also do the sunrise. So out of Alice Springs, the West McDonald Range is a very popular tour in Alice. Um, so basically, this operates year round. We've actually run it pretty much most of COVID, not with a lot of people, but it's uh, it was good to have something open for people who did come to town. Um, so out of Alice Springs, you stop at Simpsons Gap in the morning. We do Stanley Chasm here. We do morning tea. So it's a beautiful chasm there. It's an Aborig Aboriginal owned um, attraction, beautiful chasm and a lot of Aboriginal staff there, which is uh, really great to see because you get that interaction. Um, also up here then to Ellery Creek, we do that in the afternoon, in particular in summer. Um, so people can have a swim. The ochre pits, which is a different colored stone that the indigenous used to paint with, that comes from that location there. Um, Glen Helen, um, some of you probably asked, we're not sure what's happening with Glen Helen. It did close down uh, just as COVID kicked in. We're not sure what's happening, um, but at the moment we're doing our own lunches. Normally we do lunch here, so we're doing our own lunches at Ormiston Gorge. So we do a kind of a, a Bushman's lunch, which is a, a salad kind of spread. They can make some wraps and there's juice and um, bars and stuff like that and muffins. That one starts around 7.45 in the morning. It's a full day out and you're back around 5.30 back at the hotel. But you get morning break, uh, morning tea and you get a lunch as well. So everything is catered for. Palm Valley, as I mentioned earlier, is one of those beautiful off the beaten track places that uh, I, I call it the land of time forgot. Absolutely spectacular scenery. You're going through riverbeds. It's a purpose built four wheel drive vehicle. So you're going through riverbeds over rock formations. It's absolutely gorgeous scenery. And the beauty of this place is that actually only two operators that really operate out there um, now. So there's actually not many, not many people there when you go to visit. So it's absolutely gorgeous out there. Again, that one starts at 7.30 in the morning and you're back around 5.30. We also stop at Hermansburg, which is a uh, historical precinct, which I've just spent, if I'm not correct me, from around five, they've spent three and a half million, another two million to be spent at Hermansburg. So there's not a lot of um, infrastructure upgrades there um, and enhancements. So that's going to be great because we stop there for morning tea in the morning as well. And we also do lunch on this tour also. Um, the two days I mentioned, the one day tour at the beginning, we take that tour, we stay overnight at Ayers Rock Resort. Um, it's the premium or standards, so depending on the motel, uh, the accommodation level, you got a three star and a five star sales in the desert. Five star Outback Pioneer. It's not open right now, so it's mainly the five star one at uh, the premium that we're selling. Um, and basically, day two, as I mentioned, to get picked up in the morning really early. Uh, I think it's like 4 a.m. Down to the canyon, breakfast when you get there, uh, canyon walk after breakfast, and then we head back in the afternoon to the resort, uh, Ayers Rock Resort. Um, there's a park, um, we do the transfers, uh, pick you up in the morning, eight o'clock, drop you there around 8.15, and then you spend the morning there going through the park. It's absolutely spectacular area out there. Very peaceful, you get lots of bird enclosures, you got the nocturnal house, you got the birds of prey show, um, and then uh, we pick them up at 12 o'clock and return them to their hotel, or if they wanna get dropped in the town center, that's fine as well. Uh, transfers between Alice Springs and Ayers Rock, we do that in the bigger coaches. So just a quick one with the, the big coaches, they're mainly for travel between Alice Springs and Ayers Rock because of the big distance and the comfort. They've also got onboard toilets. They've got Wi-Fi, uh, drop-down TV. So we play some movies on the way home in particular at nighttime. So um, people can just sit back and, and relax and have a sleep if they want to. And then the Alice Springs Airport Shuttle. So we meet all the flights. Um, it's been pretty quiet over the last nine, 12 months, but we are starting to see business starting to pick up, which is great. So keep sending those bookings. 
So that would be absolutely awesome. There's just a variety of vehicles we do. So we also do a lot of group touring, uh, private group touring. So our main business is FIT, but we do a lot of tailored charters. In, in particular with COVID, I'm getting probably three or four a day at the moment asking me for different private itineraries, which is great. But we have a variety. We can do big groups down to uh, medium-sized groups. So you've got your four-wheel drives uh, at the top there. you got your 21-seaters in the middle. And then at the bottom end, we have a 13-seater and we have the um, premium vehicle, which is our two, three, four people and Land Rover Discoveries. So we have a couple of those as well. Um, COVID obviously is a big on the mind. Um, Petra, we might just need to start wrapping this up. We're just running a little bit over time. Travel safe plan. So all you need to know. So we look forward to welcoming you guys to Central Australia. <laughs> Thank you for that. Have you got an email address say that you could um, let everybody know? Yeah, so my direct email is patrick at emurun.com.au. Great. Thank you. Have there been questions come through, Meg? Uh, yeah, just, just one or two. Perhaps if you just jump onto the uh, conversation, Pat, and have a look at those, that would be great. No problem. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that. That was really informative. There was a lot of information there. Look, um, those tools all look really really good um so next up we've got jess lillis from aat kings jess if you want to share your screen and um and take take it away thank you i'm just sharing setting this up now i am uh, aware of everyone's time so please bear with me because i have some really exciting things to talk about um, I'm Jess Lillis. I'm representing AAT Kings and Inspiring Journeys. We're one of the premium experience providers out here through uh, Uluru and the surrounds. Um, so in highlighting, you know, the surrounds, I'm going to go through one of my most favourite inspiring journeys, which happens to be Outback Contrast, a journey to the centre. And it covers so many great experiences, actually many of which have already been talked about today. So I'm pretty excited to be able to uh, include them all and recap on that. So just a quick reminder for everyone, AAT Kings and Inspiring Journeys operates over 30 different tours travelling through the NT to all places on this map, plus a few more we couldn't fit in. We have a diverse selection of day tours, a great range of short breaks, where we've taken um, some of our best day tours, packaged them with accommodation, making an easy FIT booking for you. We even have six AAT Kings guided holidays and five inspiring journeys traveling through the NT. Many of our trips can easily be booked in conjunction with the GAN, and this can all be done through us. For more information, do jump onto our websites or you can reference our handy brochures available either online or through Brochure Flow. So getting back to the trip um, itself, our inspiring journey, as I said, we are a premium experience provider. So just recapping the trip, we operate with small groups, maximum of 22 guests on our inspiring journeys. This particular trip is five days and four nights in premium accommodation. I do ask you to note that this starts on day one at 9am, so guests arriving prior to day one is essential. We don't include accommodation as we find guests tend to have their own arrangements, but if you do need to book that, we can book that pre-accommodation for you. On this trip, most meals are included, which allows guests the flexibility and freedom to make their own choices for a few of the lunches and one of the dinners. We're operating regular departures from April through to October, and we can also operate this trip in reverse, so there are more availability options for your clients. Being an inspiring journey, we have a minimum age of 12. However, as I just went through, we have a huge range of other options uh, all through the NT, suitable for all travellers and some great packages for families. Um, for this particular trip, I also want to make a note that it is particularly best suited for those with moderate to high fitness levels and good mobility. Um, this really ensures that they can make the most and get the most out of their travels with us. And uh, while some of the activities do include options for those, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, I guess, lower fitness or limited mobility, our, we our um, coach itself is not wheelchair accessible. So to give you an idea of the coach, here it is. It's gorgeous. Our four-wheel drive vehicle allows us to get off-road in some of those uh, remote areas like the Giles track. And while this photo of mine doesn't really do it justice, I can ensure you the interior is beautifully appointed. It's fully equipped with reclining leather seats, USB charging points, large windows, as you can see, taking in all the views of the Great Expanse. We've got on-board bathroom facilities and even a complimentary snack bar. Um, and again, just going back to because of the design of the vehicle, boarding steps are quite large, more so than our standard coaches. So again, those with limited mobility or those in wheelchairs um, will uh, won't be able to uh, travel with us on this particular trip. But as I said, we do have other options. 
So the trip itself, let's get straight into it. We start day one at 9 a.m. visiting the Overland Telegraph Station from Alice Springs, and we get out to the West Mac Rages and Simpsons Gap. In the evening, we head out to the old quarry. We meet Danny, who you see pictured here in the blue shirt. He's currently showing our guests how to make his delicious rum and raisin damper. It's absolutely delightful. Danny gives us a rundown of life in the outback, um, the history of the old quarry out there. And then he cooks us a delicious Aussie barbecue dinner and joins us around the camp back, uh, sorry, the campfire in true outback style. In the evening, we are staying at Crown Plaza, Alice Springs, Lasseter's in the premium rooms there. Day two, we head off to Get Off Road and they're along the Giles track as we continue to Kings Canyon. Um, as Sophie was mentioning, we actually include the Under the Desert Moon experience. So uh, as guests, we're led to this beautiful fire pit in a secluded part of the resort and it makes the entire evening pretty exclusive. We sit down to a seven course degustation, one of a kind experiences. The meals are focused on highlighting local bush flavors and they're all perfectly paired with beautiful wines throughout the evening. As Sophie mentioned, there are some beautiful deluxe spa rooms on offer and we stay in a few of them, which is fantastic. Even though this photo was taken in the day, I can personally assure you that a spa in the evening after dinner is just, oh, it's just as delightful as you probably think it is and a great way to end the day. Day three, we are off again exploring Kings Canyon. And as you can see on the map, and as I mentioned in the chat, there's a couple of options designed to suit most mobility and fitness levels. So if we follow the blue line, there is the gentler creek bed walk. It's 2.6 kilometres, usually takes about an hour, hour and a half. Really suitable for those low to medium levels, fitness and mobility. Alternatively, for the more adventurous, if we look back at the map, you can see the rim walk in the red line. Now, this is a six kilometre walk, takes about three to three and, a, uh, three and a half hours, depending on the speed of the group. It's a fabulous experience. I strongly recommend doing it, but it is really only suited for those with good fitness and no mobility um, issues because it, it can be a little bit strenuous. There are a lot of stairs. Um, after Kings Canyon, we continue through to Uluru and Katajuda National Park. Stops are made along the way and we have the great opportunity to learn and be immersed in both Indigenous and modern outback cultures. The afternoon finishes with one of my highlights, the uh, sunset drinks here out at Uluru. So you obviously get to watch the changing colours with a glass of bubbles in hand. I obviously need a top up there. It's a perfect chance to take all those Insta MB shots. Um, the next two nights we are staying out at Sales in the Desert. So um, as it was mentioned earlier, these are newly refurbished rooms, which is very exciting. So we've got two nights out there at Sales. The next morning, day four, is probably my absolute favourite day. And it starts in the most spectacular way here at the Field of Lights, but doing it at sunrise. So as it was mentioned earlier, you can do the Field of Lights at uh, sunset. We do it at sunrise. Um, I like this part because Bruce Munro, the artist who designed the installation, he actually intended it to be witnessed and experienced at sunrise. The concept being that the land slowly comes to life as the sun rises. And this is expressed through the lights changing colors almost to match the colors of the sky as the sun rises. And the experience ends with the lights seemingly dissipating and melting back into the ground and um, dissipating up into the sky as the at the start of the new day. After the sunrise experience, we head back to the hotel for breakfast. After breakfast, we continue exploring in and around Uluru, including here at the base, where we walk along the path listening to um, Aboriginal Chukupa, which are creation stories. And these all truly come to life as we explore deeper, witnessing rock art and making our way into Mitajulu waterhole. During the middle of the day, we take a bit of a break because it gets a bit hot, but then in the afternoon, once it's a bit cooler, we head out to Katajuda for our gentle 2.6 kilometer walk amongst the domes through Walper Gorge. After our beautiful leisurely afternoon walk, we head back to sales for our celebration dinner at El Kari, and it's our final night in Uluru. Day five is our departure day, or obviously guests can stay on. As you've heard, there's tons of great things to do out there. I've heard that Seat has some pretty awesome experiences, so be sure to get in touch with Monica about that. 
that really completes our trip. Um, but in terms of what we've got on offer, there's some great value there. You know, uh, we've got this great offer until the 15th of March. It brings the trips to 2,710 per person, which I personally think is unbelievable. Such great value for superior accommodation, most meals, all the experiences I went through, plus a handful of more that I didn't even have time to touch on. It'll really have your clients give them bragging rights, talking about how they've seen the Red Center in such a unique, immersive, indulgent way, yet still feel re relaxed and recharged from their travels. Um, sorry to rush through that all, but I believe this will be um, uploaded to the website. Feel free to get in contact with us with any questions via the contact details there. But I do have a minute or so now, Karen, if anything's come through as I've been talking. Thanks for that. Um, Mika, have there been any questions? Meg, was there any questions come through? Oh, my apologies. I was I was being a mutant there. Um, no, just uh, just some comments about uh, what great um, how good the inspiring journeys looks and the vehicles. It does it does look amazing? So thank you so much Thanks, for Jess. that, Jess. That was that was fantastic. I'm just going to quickly share my screen again and just wrap things up, everyone. So bear with me. So just to um, wrap things up with the product, the product showcase, we have got six fantastic prize packages up for grabs, um, and these have all been donated by our operators, and we've included flights into, uh, onto every package for two, and that's a return from your nearest main city, and for any New Zealand agents that we've got on the call today, that includes flights from New Zealand as well. So to be in to win the competition, a package in the competition, you just need to answer 10 of our 31 operator questions. You can do on our website which is the tourismmt.com.au trade showcase website so there's 31 questions one from each of our operators that have um, been part of this program and so you just need to answer 10 of those questions and you have until the 5th of March to do that too so you've got another couple of weeks and we'll draw that the week after we have a couple of um, really good events happening at, in the NT at the moment. The first is the Million Dollar Fish, which um, I've touched on before. If you've got a client that's really into fishing, this is a really cool thing to send them up to do. It finishes on the 31st of March, but it does run every year. There's been a whole heap of fish that have been tagged, and if your client comes up and fish and they um, catch one with the tagging, they will win that prize. And uh, there's six, I believe, that have been tagged with a million dollars. So um, a really cool option. We have Pajama, which takes place in Alice Springs. It's a beautiful Aboriginal light festival that takes place in the West McDonald Ranges, and that is um, happening in April. We have the Taste of Kakadu, which is a three day event um, experiencing Kakadu's cuisine and its culture, and that's in May. And we have the Barunga Festival, which takes place in June. It's a three-day event of music, sports, traditional arts and cultural activities. And it supports the local re uh, remote Indigenous communities near Catherine. Uh, so at the moment, the NT Summer Sale is on. Hopefully you've heard of that. Uh, that is when uh, with any $1,000 on NT product that is spent by your client, they will save $200. And that's capped at $1,000 for you as an agent. For every eligible booking you make, you will get a $50 incentive. And for every five bookings, you will get an entry into um, win a place on a for mill that we're running at the end of this year so there's 10 places to be won and that is on any booking um, up until the 31st of March so departures can take place on the 31st of March and your client can come back in April so those are still eligible. The trade training program, which is what the NT product showcase is part of, this runs every quarter. We have a webinar um, similar to what we have today. We have online training modules, um, news, newsletters and resources. So sign up to that if you aren't already part of it. It's on our trade website. And we also have really good prizes up for grabs <clears throat> every quarter with that. So the NT product showcase, um, this is the last of our webinars, but we do have all of our webinars and um, nine other pre-recorded webinars on our website for you to um, go and watch at your leisure. As I, as I mentioned, we've got the great competition happening where you need to answer 10 questions. So we have some spot prizes um, for our agents today. So they'll be winning a really cool jet set pack from Viva La Body, which is an NT 
uh, company and the Jet Set Pack includes these beautiful natural vegan products. They're all handmade. They're all made in the Northern Territory. And our winners, if we've got Nancy Crooks from Travel Manager and Wayne Hamilton from Swagman Tours, I'll be getting in touch with you guys to send out your prize. So that is it from me. Thank you so much for attending everybody. Thank you for supporting us during this and thanks to our operators for coming along today. Um, please feel free to get in touch if you've got any questions. I'll be sending out the contact details of all of our operators this afternoon and this webinar will be going up onto our website too. So uh, feel free to come and watch that again at, at your leisure. So thanks very much and we'll see you all again soon.